um, to meet myself and Ethan. Ethan's actually one of our Northampton Town uh, Football Education students. Uh, the aim of today really is then we're going to share this video with all our students, 1,500 students across the uh, United Kingdom, um, to really just to, to get guest speakers in and just talk about their career pathways, about their love, love for sport, for football and life in general really. So thank you for giving us this morning. Ethan, do you want to start the question? Yeah, so I'll sure pass over to you, Ethan, to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Hi, hello, Kelvin. Can you introduce yourself to the, the learners and what you currently do in Northampton, also in the United States? Yeah, sure. Uh, Kelvin Thomas, chairman of Northampton Town Football Club. Uh, I'm just involved in different businesses on you know, transatlantically, both sides of the, the pond, as it were. Um, so, yeah, so main roles, main, main responsibilities here is his ownership of the club, making sure everything works, make sure it's fully funded, etc., etc. How important did you view like school and education when you were growing up? Were you more of a, a teacher's pet or a teacher's man? <laughs> uh, I'm a big education person. Uh, I think it's very important. And then going to America, education becomes very important over mm -hmm. there, especially. Um, I went to university. Uh, I didn't actually complete, which is one of my, uh, not regrets, but one of my things I would have probably changed. But I didn't complete it only because I had a job opportunity in Florida which originally took me out there. So uh, so education for me is, is important. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you you always need to continue learning, uh, whether it's just formally or informally. Uh, I think, you know, when you stop learning, you, you're, um, you struggle in life. I think you, everything slows down when you stop learning. So you're always looking to educate yourself. So I think it's very important. Were there any subjects that you've ever showed a, a real interest in or you, do, you think affected your, your choice for a career pathway? Yeah, PE, very much. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I wasn't a bad footballer. That's what probably got me into uh, I played non-league level um, and I got into coaching quite early, so all of that stuff was important to me. Um, and I was all right. I was a decent student. I, I think I got, if we go back, I think I got nine GCSEs. I was actually in the second year of GCSEs at Rubber Taken, uh, second year group. That's, that was my question, maybe that was yeah, that yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I got, I got, I think I got nine GCSEs <laughs> and mm. I ended up getting a A-level English, A-level media studies and uh, B-Tech in, BDL, B-Tech in journalism, okay. media, print and media journalism. Because I originally was going to go into media. I was originally going to go into journalism. Oh. Did you have any role models as a, a youngster? And did they, any of them influence you in the career that you eventually took? Uh, it, well, role models are heroes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. In terms of heroes, uh, Trevor Brooking was always one of my heroes mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, from a football perspective. Mm. Um, and I was lucky enough to get to meet him at one point. So that was good. Uh, role models... Um, yeah, just some coaches maybe that I'd had uh, growing up. Um, a fella uh, called Paul Patton was, was, was quite influential in, 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 he was a coach of ours when I was probably 15. Um, so yeah, so some, but, but kind of sort of trod, trod my own path a lot mm. as well. Mm. Was being a businessman or owning a company and running a football club always part of your aspirations or did it come later on? Uh, it was never part of my aspirations. Um, it definitely came later on, mm -hmm. and I've never followed a I've never followed a, a, a direct path. Um, I do look back and say, would that would that have been better for me? Um, and I don't know. I'm, again, I'm not a regret in person life. Mm -hmm. I'm a regret in life sort of person. So, um, so there are different ways to go from anyone's pathway, and I've got very good friends that. Have, that have, said they want to become lawyers at very early on and mm -hmm. became a lawyer and been very successful. Um, I didn't have that sort of mindset. I didn't have that sort of pathway. And mm -hmm. I think I've been relatively successful as well mm -hmm. and had some some really good experiences. So I'm not disappointed I took a different mm -hmm. path, but mm -hmm. I certainly, and I, and I recognize there are a lot of paths that people can take. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so that Kelvin, what kind of age or stage of your career to start thinking about becoming a chairman? I mean, for me, what would lead you to get involved in being a chairman? I mean, how does that even become a reality? I mean, for for it wasn't. It wasn't even a, even at the time. It wasn't even considered. Right? I, right. It, it, there wasn't a, a light bulb moment that says, right, I'm going to go run a football club. I was based in America. A friend of mine 
at the time, a couple of friends of mine at the time said we're going to go by a football club in England. Had a good experience in football, uh, different levels uh, from playing to coaching to running clubs in America, not professionally, but youth academies, etc. And, and I said I'd get help get involved and became, and that, I did get involved when they, originally it was a purchase of Oxford United. Um, and I became uh, managing director for a year. I actually came over here for a year. Oh, wow. and, uh, I was one of the youngest managing directors in, in football mm -hmm. at the time, probably still one of the youngest ones <laughs> uh, at the time. And then um, I was in my probably lower thirties then or mid thirties. And then um, went into, and then went back to Florida after a year and then came back as chairman of Oxford United. And it was more of a, I don't want to say no one else wanted to do it, but it was more because of, I've got certain skill sets in terms of business turnarounds, mm -hmm. I'm better, at, I'm good at business turnarounds and uh, that's a, that's a skill set that I've identified and, and I can handle stress and pressure, and pressure pretty well. So so, and that, so that's how I really got into it. I came into a, 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 a situation where Oxford United was probably going to go out of business mm -hmm. or yeah. very close to it, uh, pretty similar to Northampton to be honest mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we managed to survive through it. Yeah. I mean, it comes across a bit, but I've seen some videos online as well that you've got a real passion for, for football, obviously, and business as well. You mentioned about your, about your playing career, and I think that you were a West Ham fan when you were younger. I mean, what level did you play to? Not when I'm younger, I am a West Ham fan. <laughs> You're still a West Ham yeah, fan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so what kind of level did you play in coach at, really? Um, I, co I, I played at, I played at um, what would it be now? Sort of Conference South. I, I played for Dulwich Hamlet. Good stuff, yeah, exactly. Um, Brom standard. Bromley. Mm -hmm. um, Banstead got to the Vars semi final. Mm -hmm. and, um, so, so I played a decent level. I won a national champion, a national championship in uh, uh, in college, university actually, University of Greenwich. We won the Bunak Nationals. I think it was the Bunak, no, what was it? Busa Nationals, uh, British universities. That's right. Um, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then coaching wise, I coached um, coached a lot in America. I'm a B licensed coach over there, the equivalent. Um, and and I coached at sort of the regional level, ODP yeah. level, state. So I coached teams out of Florida, the state of Florida, and that kind of stuff. Great so experience, oh yeah, decent experience, yeah. knowledge. I, I I don't really get involved overly too much in the football mm -hmm. uh, here. I never have. I've never been that type of chairman that says, right, okay, I'm going to pick the team. Yeah. I'd stay away from it, but. <laughs> On the flip side, I do understand and see what's going on. I do have some sort of knowledge. So, um, so yeah, so but, uh, decent experience. So what took me to America in the first place, yeah, coaching? Sure. Okay. Yes. And you mentioned about since achieving the GCSE low levels. Uh, <laughs> so you're showing your, your young age at that stage there. Okay. What other qualifications did you feel like you needed to gain or to get in your portfolio okay, to be a successful businessman, I suppose, and a, and a football man as well? Um, again, uh, no pathway to, I never sat down and went, I need to get this, this and this. And I think there's so many more resources now for kids and, and, and uh, they, they need to take those resources and take advantage of those resources. Because if I, if I now went, you know, you've got to remember like my, it's hard for a lot of these kids to, to remember this as you will know, but you know, my 18 year old days or 17 year old days when I was formulating this, we wouldn't have been able to Google how to become a football coach or how to become a, you know, and, I, and right now I, these kids could put in how to become a lawyer, how to become a coach, and suddenly you get a hundred articles. So there's a little, the, the resources that are available to kids now and it's so much better and, and people need to take, you know, kids need to take advantage of that. Um, so I never really had, to, okay, what do I need? What do I need to get? Uh, what did I get? In the end, I got a lot of experience. I was thrown at the deep end a couple of times. Coach from the coaching side, I got coach, coaching courses, qualifications. Again, don't stop learning. Yeah. And then, and, and I went to college for originally. I went to college for journalism, which was incredibly helpful. I, the writing and, and being able to communicate is massive. I believe in in yeah. any 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 industry you want to go into. The ability to communicate is, is key to anything. Um, and for me as a business leader as such, the ability to motivate, I think is also very, very important. 
Um, but but the, initially, the ability to communicate with somebody, either written form or verbally, is is, is huge. Um, and then and then in my degree stage, I actually went into sort of a teaching mode, coaching mode, which was um, University of Greenwich um, yeah. for PE teaching. So I can you know a lot of the kids that are on these courses, I can you know I. Um, a lot of empathy for because that's the sort of area that I was mm -hmm. I was in and that gave me a lot of interest in information in sports science and that gave me some help in in what I'm doing now in terms of the, the club etc. Yeah, that's a really good message for our learners. As a chairman of Northampton Town, I mean when you're at home, I mean I love three three o'clock on a Saturday so we can just see football times and even as a fan you have a kind of like a Saturday routine. As a chairman, when you're based in Northampton, do you have a routine on a Saturday? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, not. Yeah, I do, mm -hmm. and that's, um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a, a super, su some level superstitious fella. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, and and it, and you know, silly things like, I've got a pair of Northampton socks, and so far this season, every time I've worn them and I've been at a game with one, apart from the Forest Green, I forgot to wear them Ooh. on Saturday and we lost. So, you know, so yeah. routine wise, on a Saturday, I'll probably. Depends if the youth team are playing. Sometimes I'll come up and watch the youth yeah, team. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you actually there when you're yeah, yeah. I've seen you sat on the bank watching. Yeah, yeah. It's great to see. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I come and watch the youth team now mm. and again uh, if they're at home. Um, and then, so I get here for one ish. I typically uh, I'll pop in to see the manager, see the coaching staff, pop around a little bit, say hello. And then you're in here in the boardroom, dinner and lunch and over lunch. and talking to people in here and then out for the game. I always make sure that I'm out there early. I don't like, it uh, drives me crazy when people <laughs> come in at, you know, just after three as the game's yeah. kicking off. Mm -hmm. I wanna, I, when I'm here, I wanna watch the game. Football, football fan. Yeah, I, I like mm -hmm. football, I like yeah. the football and I wanna see what's going on and I wanna watch it. And yeah, you know, and it's great because fans, especially the way we're set up in Northampton, you know, fans have got a lot of access and they can come and talk to you and yeah. etc. which is fantastic yeah. and I get a real positive response from fans. It's just the fans when it's like three o'clock and they want to have a chat yeah. and I'm like, listen, I'm sorry, I want to watch the game. And so I make sure I'm here early enough, uh, watch it up there early enough and et cetera. So, and then hopefully watch a, a good game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, uh, when you spend your time in the States and it's a Saturday afternoon, is it is it here next to wireless? Or is it, is it a case of you, you can switch off from the football because you're so far away? I really don't enjoy it. Yeah. I have to be honest, I don't enjoy mm -hmm. it. I don't mind. There's a lot of pressure on the games, and, and yeah. people sometimes don't really always understand that, 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 that in terms of staff, in terms of players, in terms of everything that goes on around a football club, it's very, very, the, the result influences the next week. Yeah. It does, you know, we're, this week is much more positive because we're coming off the back of a good result on Tuesday. So, so, so there is a lot of stress that comes along with that, and, and you have to learn to deal with that. Um, but so so in 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 terms of um, watching the games, I don't mind it here when I'm with with people. Or even go, I like I don't mind going away either. I enjoy the away trips. Yes. When I'm sitting on my hut, sitting on my own in Florida, <laughs> not as much fun. Tough. Not as much fun. Um, so I tend to I can watch it on iFollow because we have a VIP yeah. stream. So I do tend to watch it, but okay. I don't. Um, there are times where I'll be doing other things, and maybe I've got it on my phone, yes. or and I, I'll always watch the game after. Mm -hmm. But when I'm when I'm home in America, I don't always watch it mm -hmm. live because I don't enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. and, and then you get the alerts, and every time you get an alert, <laughs> you don't know which one it weighs <laughs> it goes. So I just yeah. so I get that, and and so but and I do t I watch you know, um, but it's ten o'clock on a Saturday morning as well, yeah, so it's just, nice the timing's a bit you know a bit different, and there'll be. I, a lot of the time I'll have a Northampton game on, there'll be a Premier League game because we can watch them in America yeah, or in the background or whatever. So it's all a bit hit and miss yeah, really about tough, what, tough what, times. Yeah, what, I, what I do but <laughs> yeah. in terms of the games in, in, in America. But uh, overall, I, listen, I'm a football fan. I enjoy yeah. football. Last night I went to Coventry, Cardiff, you know, just, just to watch. I enjoy watching yeah. football and I actually enjoy watching football when I'm not overly involved in the, the game itself. Yeah, if you switch off time as well, I suppose. Thanks, Kelvin. You've obviously been a very successful chairman of the clubs you've been at. What would you say is the, the greatest success that you've had at any of the clubs? 
Well, you can, you've got to go back to the promotions. The promotions are always the best thing. Um, and I've done it, luckily, I've had the experience of doing it th three times in, what, 10 years, which is, yeah. which is good. You know, yeah, we've had a couple of relegations along the way, but we kind of pushed those over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but the promotions were excellent. Um, and I've done them differently, and yeah. th which was quite interesting. I did, the first one I did with Chris Wilder at Oxford, which mm -hmm. was, which was uh, out of the conference into the league, the football league, which was massive. And it was a playoff, it was at Wembley. 45,000 people there. It was that was a, an incredible experience, and again, I was quite young, and and um, that was a wonderful experience. In that, that whole thing, uh, and then obviously doing it with Chris here, you know, going up automatically again was was something special, and there was something about that year that was the year we came in and bought the club, and able to help out a little bit in January with a couple of players, and suddenly we, you know, we I always say we had the luckiest first year of ownership ever you know we, we, <laughs> what did we do we, we suddenly bought the club we lost the first game I think and then one didn't didn't lose mm. from, from then for a year almost so <laughs> it was very enjoyable and uh, you know and the fact that we won the league the way we did with four games to go and you know it was that was a that was a fun experience it was a fun experience and the celebrations <laughs> might have gone on too long and the open top bus tour and uh, and then obviously the last one we won during COVID, mm -hmm. you know, and that was the strangest experience of all time, really. Like, I, I hardly saw the team. I hardly, there were players that came in that season that I didn't even meet, mm -hmm. you know, which is unheard of. And it was, you know, because they came in and out of pretty quickly and, and uh, we won at Wembley. And it, one of my favorite images is actually uh, Nicky Adams, oh, Nicky, mm -hmm. a fan favorite, and great kid. And a few of the lads on the phone to me in Florida on the Wembley pitch. Mm. There's a, there's a, I think they were just w wanting to speak to me to congratulate me. And <laughs> the reality is they were asking for their bonuses. So, <laughs> uh, you know, Nicky. Well, that's Nicky. That's Nicky all over. But it's quite to me. That's one of my favourite images of, mm -hmm. of, of of that time. Was was them being on fan. I think he got on Sky Sports for being on yeah. FaceTime and. And you talk about watching the game. I ended up having a big party for that. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. For that, uh, so <laughs> so there was probably about forty people mm -hmm. at the house, mm -hmm. and um, we watched it and, and enjoyed that. That was a good moment. So really, the promotions. There's a lot of positive. There's a lot of real positive stuff. Like some of the stuff we do here in Northampton in terms of the community work that we yeah, do is mm -hmm. is is, uh, is quite touching, really. And some of the stuff that we've done over the years and and, and the work that goes on behind the scenes is. Mm. You know, and, and that makes you very proud, especially especially COVID. COVID was quite impressed. Was was obviously a massive impact on a lot of people, and and I made calls, and the managers made calls, managers and coaching staff, and all the staff made calls to people that were lonely and during that time. And you, it makes you realize humbling experience when you know I, I I quarantined a couple of times COVID, but I'm quarantining in Florida in a mm. nice house with a swimming pool, etc., etc. <laughs> yeah, but you know you're talking to you know. 85 year old man who's in a one bedroom, you know, a part of a you know, flat mm. with, with, you know, just, you know, and I've, yeah, most people are normal, normal for most people now is Sky Sports with 50 channels and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But he's got the four channels and a radio, and you're suddenly going yeah. and you're talking to him for 50, 10 minutes, and you, then you start to understand what mm. loneliness is yeah. and what, what, what COVID was for, for some mm. people. So those sort of things were humbling. So. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about, obviously, you've had a great relationship with managers, with Chris Wilder. You've just mentioned the successes you've had. When you have to dismiss a manager as a chairman, um, do, do you use fan opinion as one of the factors? Because I was thinking there's been so many managers that the fans are trying to get out of the club. But I, I, I've always been interested if the chairman listens to that. Well, the, the, the reality is you see the same thing, don't mm. you? You see the same thing. You, it, it typically your decision takes longer than the fans because the fans are instant and mm -hmm. yeah. need gratification straight away and which is understandable because they're football fans and football fans and I'm a football fan and, and 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 football fans have a range of views as well like people in general it's you know it's it's um, it, some people want it happening now some people want it to more to give the manager more time. Some people won't even want to change the manager. Mm -hmm. There's a range of views, so you have to kind of take a balance. So you do, you do, you get a sense, you get a feeling, but you also have to 
just look out what just think about what's in the best interest of the club and it's, it's a, none of these decisions are easy so mm. when you first become a chairman at a club are you doing it uh, having a plan for many years in the future or are you taking it season by season uh, we're not great at longer term plans mm -hmm. it's never been our <laughs> mindset it's very difficult very difficult for football clubs to, to especially in lower leagues to to look long too far in the distance because they're not they're, you know they're loss making businesses let's be honest yeah. so you know you, and, and, and some of it is dictating around how much money you really want to lose you know and, and and so you you know and you try and try and put things in place and and and, and fo football is you know is not a simple okay we'll put the plan in place and let's follow it because you might suddenly get Man United in the cup and get an extra million quid or you might get knocked out of the cup by yeah. Stourbridge, Stourbridge <laughs> in the first round, you know, mm. and, and, and suddenly you're, you're down a hundred grand, mm. or those kind of things. So, you know, and, and, and you look at it, football's, football's easy to everybody else. Mm. It? Yeah. it is, it looks it, hey, we're going to put a team out, it'll be great. Mm. But then look at us, for example, you, you come to the end of the transfer window and right at the end you think, okay, what do we need? Joseph Mills gets a long-term injury, yeah. Sid Nelson gets a long-term injury, and all of a sudden you're going, oh, We've got a problem here, so we've got. Mm -hmm. you can, and you can't just suddenly go. Oh well, you've got to address those problems, and, mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes they're not. You know, we had to address really the problem in two days, mm -hmm. and you know why have you not been thinking about it before? Well, because they were fit <laughs> two days before, <laughs> you know, and they were doing all right. Yeah. So, so you, so those are the sorts of things that you mm -hmm. and we talk about all the time as chairman and and as owners and etc. That, that uncertainty, you know, you can mm -hmm. sign, sign the best player in the world, you know, and put all your put a lot of money into it, and all of a sudden gets injured or does something silly, or you know, in 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 the case of you know a couple of players that I've been been involved with have a heart defect and they might have to retire, and the, the just you can't control those things. You can't control, and you can't really control performance. You can do what you can, but you can't control performance. So, um, so yeah, so. It, you just have to deal with what comes. You've touched on it a little early, but I was really interested in a chairman's relationship with the, the players. So do you think it's best to have a, a good relationship with players or to keep a little bit of a distance from them? Listen, you know, I'm a 48-year-old man, you know, <laughs> let's be honest, what, you know, I'm not going to sit in a nightclub with a with a 19-year-old player. <laughs> you know, what, what am I going to talk about? But. Or what we're we going to talk about? What's he going to know? But I, I think I've got a good relationship with the players. I, uh, I think the way you, the, the relate, the way you develop that relationship is if you're honest, you're upfront. You know, you, you have good conversation. You know, you talk to people, and you, you know, you're, and you're about the place, and you're about them a little bit. And and, but you also the decisions that you make. You know, we're a good, we're a well-run football club. Mm. You know, and that's not that's not necessarily me being the man that runs it because I'm not you know you, there's a there's a whole staff here that, that James and the team that run the football club really but the direction is is that we're going to be honest we're going to be honorable mm -hmm. and we're going to we're going to be competitive and we're going to be hard working um, and so the players then appreciate that from a football club if they're all looked after if they're taken care of in in a reasonable way not in a you know we don't rack them in cotton wool and sometimes they've got to do things they don't really want to do but that's mm -hmm. part of life but but so we just so so I think players respect that and that you know and you know we don't have overly we don't have unrealistic expectations and we accept that mm -hmm. players are going to make mistakes and we'll support them and we'll help them and we've done that in numerous occasions that people outside the club don't really see mm -hmm. um, and, and we, we would always keep it that way and we, we just do things we try and we just try and do things right. We try and do things in a professional manner, and 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 and, and that way you'll have a good relationship. But I normally pop in. I I don't tend to. Very rarely have I gone into the hut for some reason. I don't know why. Really, I don't really go in when it's a home game. But mm. away games, I will typically go in mm. after the game and just shake everyone's hand when mm. I lose and mm. say thanks and stuff like that. Uh, when I'm here, I did a, I did I did a, uh, I did it both. I did it at Forest Green and I did a. Um, Newport this week. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Newport handshake was a bit more fun, <laughs> but um, but you know, players are working hard. Yeah, they're not always going to get it right, but they're working hard. They're trying. That's all we ask for. Mm -hmm. is a, 
they put the effort in, they try and they, they give it a bit of a go. Because a lot of time you hear people saying, oh, he's on this amount of money a week, he mustn't care, but they are trying. Of course they care, they care. You know, it's, it's it makes it's, it, there are some chairmen out there that hate players and will always tell you players, <laughs> yeah. listen, players will let you down, but mm-hmm. that's just the nature. That's not, not doing it on purpose. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a team game with individuals. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're not giving, we're not paying them enough money that this is, they can retire after this mm-hmm. this season. They're on one two year contracts, so they're not always going to be in Northampton. It's it's a different it's a, it's a bit different to the Premier League. They're not Premier League money. They're not mm-hmm. Premier League comforts. So it's a decent career. It's good money. It's what they want to do. And but also for some of them, it's you know some of them it's that's all they want to do. Some of them have got other interests, and it's a so it is a job, and mm-hmm. so you have to balance yeah. that as well. As a football and education student, I wanted to ask for your opinion on the football and education program and the, the women's pathway, and some of the other pathways that might get overlooked a little bit when people have a first look at the club. I think the education pathway is fantastic, and and what some people don't know is that I was, I was actually uh, uh, chairman of Oxford when VL UK first introduced the idea to it. To mm-hmm. it. So. Uh, and and when they showed me the benefits, I was like, well, it's a no-brainer. Isn't it? It's mm-hmm. fantastic. You got a bunch of kids, male and female, walking around in a tracksuit, being educated. <laughs> you know what 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 can go wrong? It was you know and and, the, and and what I really liked about it was it gave it an education path where, with to some at the time especially to some kids that may not have taken an education path, mm-hmm. and that was important to me and. And, and, and that's what and I think it's changed a little bit now I think it's much more recognised as an educational mm-hmm. path and and um, and, and, it, and I, we love it you know we've put an investment into it the, the um, study centre that we've you know that we committed to up at to Crispin's is, is important and I think we're looking at doing some more stuff in terms of locations and and, and speaking to Jean seeing the, the girls cohort come in and mm-hmm. just go from strength to strength is is wonderful and I, I, I really enjoy it you know I see that kids probably don't realize it here but I see a bunch of the kids walking past the office all the time like because I can see it looking out the window so it you know I'm, I'm proud of the fact that, that we have that and people are walking around representing mm. Northampton kids and walking around in a positive manner representing Northampton and it helped get people like me off the street for example doing maybe nothing in bad areas yeah to yeah hundred percent there's I like I enjoy the education aspect of what we do because it, it, it's a wide range. It's mm-hmm. it's it's kids that are coming off the street. Mm-hmm. It's kids that are coming from privileged backgrounds that come into that environment because that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kids that want to play football. It's you know, Scotty Pollock is a mm-hmm. prime example mm-hmm. of what happened, and we had a kid around that just before that. I think it was I think his name was Ethan, who came through the program that. That's again. It's mm. a fantastic pathway, but it's also now evolved so much. It's not about just about Scotty Pollock getting into mm. the first team. It's now about someone like yourself who's doing education, who's doing you know journalism stuff. Who's mm. actually you've suddenly found a little pathway that two years ago, three years, you would never have thought. All of mm. a sudden, I'm going to be interviewing people, mm. and that's and that's and that's that's the positive. And then you you know that that's that's the key to what we're all doing, and it's about. And the difference is, 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 it's, and I always believe this with education. Education isn't, you're not going to get so, somewhere because you've got a degree. Mm-hmm. But that degree is going to give you more opportunity to get somewhere. Yeah. And that's the key. And it's about now as a student, do you take those opportunities ahead in front of you? Do you, uh, the education programs open up more opportunities. Mm-hmm. Now it's still your responsibility as a student. To then take that responsibility, to take that opportunity yeah. forward and forge your career, forge your life opportunity, take advantage of the, some of the things that are out there. Mm. That you know that 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 the key to me is is how do we then how do you because you, you can't ensure that. And I say it the same with players, exactly the same with players. You know, we're going to give them an opportunity to play. They've got to take that opportunity. Mm. You know, and, and, and take it forward, and that's the case. same thing with education. I also wanted to ask what your main aspirations as a chairman are both for the club. Like we've seen how the club has transformed in the years that you've been there, from where it has been to a good, stable club, and also for your career personally as a chairman. 
Um, I think we continue building. Obviously, the stand is the east stand is is an important aspect of mm, yeah. that. We need to get that completed, <laughs> and, I, and I think we're close on that. Uh, that's a that's a, that's an important part of what we're doing, and we've worked a lot on that. Mm. And I've been looking at some of the statistics. Some of the statistics are actually sometimes you have to take a step back and you realise it's actually quite impressive what we've done here mm -hmm. in terms of education and and, and even on the you know player recruitment and things like that. And, money invested in the squad and money returned is good and the academy is you know i think we had 76 appearances last year mm. from an academy uh player that's incredible considering six years ago when we took over there wasn't a single one mm. so that's a, that's to me a, a, an impressive an impressive statistic and that's taken time investment from a lot of different people in terms of the work that's gone into to the academy mm. etc and there's been bumps and road and you know and and, and etc but th those sort of things are important for me i don't really have a career path i don't this isn't it's not a full-time role it's not a full it's not <laughs> it's not a full-time job for me it's a full-time role for me but yeah. it's not a full-time job for me so i don't really have a career path so it doesn't matter mm. you know, i'm not looking at this from an individual perspective we just got to make sure the club you know continues striving yeah. forward and in a realistic way you know in a realistic way we're not here to waste millions of quid just mm. you know just just uh, just to fly up the leagues but you know but that's not what we came in to do and not what we, we would do but um but you know we'll, we'll try and build in a sustainable way mm. perfect thank you well that upset anybody the question was i mean which manager would you rate as probably your best appointment if you come on well i didn't appoint chris here i appointed chris in oxford oh, yeah um right. so chris kind of almost Pointed us to be honest the other way around, but Chris was all Chris is in terms of success. Chris was, um, Chris was is probably up there. Um, uh, he's it it a very, very good manager. And, and I'm not listen, I know it's, it's yeah, luckily I still get on with almost, <laughs> all, I want to say all the managers. I, I would still have a conversation. Some are probably a bit more disappointed than others. Yeah. And some of the decisions you look back on, you go, was it right? Was it wrong? Mm. Uh, you know, people around me will, you know, and it's not just my decision as well. That's yeah. the other day I get tired yeah. with the brush, but yeah. it's not of just course. my decision. We, we talk about it. We talk about it for the staff. We, they're big decisions to make. Yeah. Um, uh, if, I look, if I look on reflection, Justin, God rest his soul, um, uh, maybe a bit early with Justin. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a bit different at that time because we were yeah. involved in the Chinese sort of investment, and so um, I like Jimmy, Jimmy, but Jimmy d it didn't work for Jimmy here for some reason. And you just look at him at Burton, you think that's a club yeah. that fits Jimmy, and I'm really pleased for him because Jimmy is a really nice fella, and and uh, yeah, Rob's again, Rob, the timing following Chris was really difficult and changing yeah. the group, and he gets blamed a lot, Rob, for. For, um, for 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 changing that group that went went up, but he gets a, I think some unfair criticism of that because he wasn't part of some of those decisions. They were decisions that were made previously, and so um, so in fairness to Robin, he's gone on and done. You know, he's with the national squad now and yeah. with Alan Neil as well, our yeah. assistant. <laughs> um, so so yeah, and you know, and Keith was an excellent manager for us. Excellent, you know, he got us. Took us from from where we were to to, to, to promotion, you know, you, you know, and and you know he was here for a decent period of time, Keith yeah. as well. And I think John's done great. You know, John yeah. with his staff has been a great start, and and I really like the the local aspect of what we're doing now in terms of with Colin and Rico and yeah. and, and and the staff. So it's good. We actually spoke to Chris Wilder last week. Yes, and yeah. he was. It came across as how fond he was still of the club. Mm. Uh, so obviously, it's deep rooted there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, really, from a bond with the place. So take someone like Chris. I suppose any manager you appointed. I mean, only when you when you look to points, are only real skills or qualities you look for a manager for that point of process. Depends on, it depends on the period. Of, depends on the period of time, as well, and what's going on. Mm. When Chris came in, interestingly, when Chris came into Oxford, and uh, I've said this openly before. One of Chris's skill sets that he had was he'd been through administration with 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 Halifax, yeah. and and we 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 
but Oxford at the time we weren't that far off that. You know, when I first, because I imagine you remember I, I was probably there a month and the things that were, were racking up, and I was like, oh. And then we appointed Chris, and he'd had that experience, um, but we did. Luckily, luckily we didn't need it. But I liked I liked Chris's experience for a young manager. Mm -hmm. He'd managed a lot of games at the time, um, and any tenacity, his competitiveness, his mm -hmm. desire, his all of that was was I liked with Chris. Um, you know, thing yeah, at the time, like Keith was, Keith was a bit of a different decision because Keith was very pragmatic, and we were in a not in a great situation at the time. We, I think we'd won one in 10 in the, in the start of League Two with Dean and it didn't work out. Um, and, and we brought Keith in and it was definitely a change of style. And, and, uh, but it was effective, very effective for what we needed to do. And we, we, we managed to survive that year and, and uh, kicked on and got promoted. So, um, so it just depends, but you know, we're like decent people. Yeah. Um, there are some managers out there that aren't, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want running your football club. <laughs> and some of them are very successful, but you, know, you have to look at it sometimes in the overall picture. Um, and, you know, and, and that is what it is. Some work out, some don't. Yeah. As a chairman, you, you hear different things on the news uh, regarding the input they put in to some players. Uh, is it an easy as an example here that the manager should a player and then suddenly a checkbook out to agree with it, or was it much more complex than that? For oh, it's much more. It's always been much more complex mm -hmm. with that. I'm a, again, I'm a. We 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 we're, we're driven, not driven, but we have a budget typically, yeah. and, we're, and a manager does control that budget really okay. with the chief exec. So yeah. So I, you know, I don't think managers should be expected to negotiate the contracts because mm -hmm. that yeah. changes the dynamic. But typically, the process here now. Is we have a, uh, and we have a bit more of a, a, a wider recruitment committee, um, which is made up of Graham Carr, Ian Sampson, the academy manager, the manager, assistant manager, head recruitment line for James, the chief exec, and then I join it. I join it as well, um, but they would mm -hmm. focus more on the identification of the players. Martin would, John would probably give Martin his what type of player he wants. What positions he's looking for. Martin will find options, and that will come to the committee to look at and discuss. And, uh, and John will probably have the final say as a manager. The yeah. club will have the final say. Yes. But John, you know, if he really wants a player, etc., yeah. etc., and then if, if and then it's up to James to make that work financially and fit in the budget and then doing the negotiations, etc. I don't really get overly involved in the process. I oversee it. Um, I don't necessarily veto. I wouldn't. I wouldn't veto anything at the late stages. Maybe at the early stages, you would ask some serious questions, which would maybe push us in a different direction. Yeah. But but overall, you know, they're the ones seeing the players. They're the ones that are working with the players. It's not for me to say who comes in and who comes out. Really, um, just need to make sure it's within budget. Yeah, trust the team. So so tend to. Mm -hmm. I tend to, to, to be involved, involved, and, and but typically the, it's all we've, we've always had a recruitment committee. It's just always been a bit smaller in terms of a manager and the chief exec and yourself yeah. and the head of recruitment. We've now included a couple of other people, which I think's helped, and the other director Mike gets involved as well. Yeah, so now we have some more fun, quick fire <laughs> questions. They were fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting to know you away from work. What are you good at that nobody knows about? Not much. Uh, <laughs> what am I good at? That is a that is a lit open question, isn't it? Say running the club that everyone knows about. Checking the airports, probably. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> flying. I'm good at. I'm good at. My wife would tell you I'm good at organisation for flying and travelling. That's yeah. a, that's a skill. That is. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because I, I fly so much, I'm pretty. I know. I'm very good at getting through an airport and. Quickest time possible. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, you know, I'm a pretty normal guy, really. I, you know, um, I don't know. It's a really hard question to think mm -hmm. about what you what you're good at. You know, very humble. Very yeah. humble. 
<laughs> Are you a, a book or, or movie fan? And which one would you recommend to our learners? Um, I am a... I'm a book fan, but I tend to do audio books now mm -hmm. rather than read. I used to read a lot. Mm -hmm. I'd sit on a plane and just read, yeah. but now I, I tend to listen. I tend to listen to audio books when I'm driving. Um, a couple of ones that I've read. Uh, I thought Matthew McConaughey's book was excellent. Green lights, green lights. That was a good book. Um, not that, he, not that necessarily that is my side of the political spectrum, but I did listen. For balance to Obama's book, and mm -hmm. and I have to say he is a wonderful speaker, mm. um, and uh, that's a twenty four yeah. hour audio book. So it's, <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't listen to it in one day. That's for sure. But, but it, it's well worth a read or a listen, just from more of a listen because I just enjoy listening to him mm. speak. I'm not saying I agree with everything he says, um, but, but very very good speaker. Um, so movie wise. I do enjoy a movie. I tend to, because I travel so much, mm. I tend to do um, uh, like Netflix and Amazon Prime series. Yeah. I tend to download those. Mm -hmm. uh, just really, obviously, I just really enjoy Clarkson's Farm. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Which then led me to watch the Grand Tour, mm. which, which I've actually, I watched the first three episodes <laughs> on the plane this, of the season four, mm. which I thought was excellent. Um, Jeremy Clark makes me laugh. He's, a, he's funny, yeah, he's yeah. funny. I've actually been up to the farm as well. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and, uh, and, I'm trying to think what else. I enjoy all the football ones. I enjoy the fly on the wall sort of stuff mm. in all the sports. Yeah. Um, Could that ever happen at Northampton? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I don't know, not in my time. I don't, I don't <laughs> it. It's not. It's not for me. You know, we're not. We're not that egotistical. <laughs> a friend of mine did it. Uh, I'm good friends with the Sunderland chairman. Mm. And did it at the time. Well, he kind of evolved. He actually did do it when he took over. So he's a good lad. He's a good lad. I'm not sure. TV portrayed him to be Stuart. Unfortunately, hey, but he didn't. It wasn't too bad. The other guy. Charlie was really nice. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm trying to think what else I've watched recently that's been pretty good. I like some left. I watched a, I watched a show called The Leftovers, mm. uh, which is quite an interesting one. It's a little bit off the wall, mm -hmm. little three part series. Mm. Um, oh, not a three part series, a three series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, so. A lot of that stuff I watch on the yeah. plane mainly. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're on the plane a lot. <laughs> if you could live anywhere, where would it be? I enjoy living in Florida. Yeah. I enjoy living where I live. Mm -hmm. um, especially in the winter, the Florida winters, the weather's beautiful. So it can be a bit tough in the summers, but I also enjoy England in the summer. Mm -hmm. In the Cotswolds, Oxfordshire mm -hmm. area. Yeah. You know, even around Northampton, there's some really nice areas, mm -hmm. you know, especially English summers are, are mm -hmm. wonderful. And we do go out with them. Yeah. yeah. But even I, I don't need heat because I'm not. I don't necessarily not a massive one for mm -hmm. going out in the sun anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I like warm. I like not cold, not freezing. But, um, but like days like today, yeah, fine. Yeah. You know, if, mm -hmm. you know, I don't le necessarily love days like Tuesday where with floods around the country, etc., <laughs> etc. Et but but otherwise, you know, I enjoy mm -hmm. England as well. Mm -hmm. Well, football, your favourite sport to play and to watch, if you still play? Uh, I, I still play a bit of golf. Yeah. I like to play a bit of golf. I quite enjoy watching golf. Um, I see the majors and obviously the Ryder Cup's yeah. coming up. Yeah, standard. I do watch sport. Uh, I watch American football. Yeah. Mm. Uh, obviously involved in business with Shaquille. Um, has an interest in basketball, but I'm not a massive basketball watcher. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do, uh, it gives me, being friends and, and involved with mm -hmm. Shaq, it does give me a bit more of an interest in in the sport overall. Mm -hmm. um, not a massive baseball fan, I have to <laughs> say. Um, do, I do go to some games in Fort Myers because there are spring training or pre-season games there, so you do tend to go for the experience. So, But, but playing-wise, still play a bit of tennis, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't... I do go to Wimbledon. I love Wimbledon as an event. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily watch TV tennis on TV too much, yeah. but obviously Emma, 
That's incredible. incredible. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. She's my age. She makes me question what I'm doing in my yeah. life. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't question what you're doing. Yeah. You're doing well, but um, she's pretty pretty impressive. She what she achieved mm. this, this mm. last weekend. But do you get to watch? Obviously, with the two, I think two teams involved now with Orlando and Miami. The MLS, do you get yeah, I do. I do. I, I yeah, I was actually, mm. I was just in, um, I was just in Nashville oh, a month ago, and I, I went to try watch Nashville train because I know the, okay. the manager at Nashville, Gary Smith, uh, quite well. And then, uh, a friend of mine runs the academy in Orlando City, so wow. I've been mm. up there. I've not been to the, the to Beckham, uh, Miami yet, um, just timing wise. We, we've talked about, me and my son talked about we should go over and watch a game. Um, and I've been to Atlanta. I've watched some games at Atlanta, which is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Atlanta United, um, their stadiums, the stadium really, stadium. very impressive, <laughs> very impressive. Um, so I was lucky enough to, 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 to enjoy that experience. So yeah, so yeah, MLS stuff I've seen yeah. quite a bit of. Right, a very serious question now. What's your go-to karaoke song on a night out, Kelvin? <laughs> Me and my best man, who's a Welsh lad, a really good singer. He used to jo- sing a lot, and I used to join in Champagne Supernova. Oh, great choice! Great choice. I like that one. Yeah. It's a long Not one. necessarily. That's a long, seven oh, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily karaoke. More <laughs> on a chair in a on, in a bar uh, after 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 the end of, at the end of the night without a karaoke. Because he's actually luckily he's a really good singer. Um, <laughs> Let him carry the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're going to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what meal would you go for? Oh, wow. Uh, I, a, a, probably a roast dinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's St- your choice. Too standard good. answer: roast dinner or pizza. I do like a pizza, but roast dinner, roast beef, yeah. Yorkshire pud, veg, um, bit of horseradish. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Well, that's a good choice. That's the answer. Uh, do you have a nickname, or have you ever had a nickname? Not a spe- well. Oh, I've had some names. I've, I can do. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. If you go on a bloody couple of internet forums, you'll see some. How to feed a feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Names. <laughs> you'll see some choice names. But no, I, the only thing probably a KT has probably okay. been yeah. has been what people yeah, when I was younger. Yeah, KT. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was uh, that was probably about it. But apart from that, yeah. not really. Oh really? Kel- Kelvin's a hard name to kind of nickname. <laughs> Interestingly, I was actually named after. I was named after the ship my grandfather served on in the war. Really? HMS Kelvin. Yeah, it, was, it was part of Mountbatten's fleet, and uh, and uh, my dad got it as a middle name, and I got it as a first name. Yeah, it was a bit of history. <laughs> <laughs> if you got stranded on desert, deserted island. Oh. If, you, if you could take one person with you, who would you, you share that? Oh, I thought you were going to go music. Um, uh, one person. That's not uh, yeah, what, and, and what CD would you take with you? Oh. What cassette? Um, <laughs> I could probably, oh, well, it depends. <laughs> My wife's going to, you've got to say wife, haven't you, really? <laughs> yeah, you've got to say wife in terms of that. Uh, in terms of, oh, I don't know. What like, would you, you listen to? What would you go to album? Go to album. Mm. I tell you what, I would. Uh, I know go to song is probably yeah. is actually uh, as you are by Rag and Bone Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but th- th- that's if I was pushed. There's a lot of other ones. Um, uh, album. <laughs> well, growing up, yeah. it would have to be. Now one. Oh yeah. Because that would have been. <laughs> I've got that. Yeah. Now because because that not because I remember what songs were on it. It was just it was it was pretty iconic yeah. at the time. Like yeah. the, when it was a it, it was when the now CD or what were they CD? It was a, I actually worked in W. H. Smith as a kid mm. as a sixteen year old in Croydon, and our job. My I used to work in the warehouse, which is a fantastic job, because all basically what we did we shrink wrapped everything. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 it was probably CDs at the time, even though now just probably just, just to start. Yeah. Yeah. So the now CDs came out, and now CDs came out that was only matched probably by the excitement of the Argos catalog coming out. <laughs> and the kids won't even. Run, I'm getting an education. Yeah, the kids <laughs> won't even know what, what I'm, we're no. talking about really. But 
the Argos catalogue, which is now on, obviously, was mm. it never used to be online because there was no website, no web. So it used to be a catalogue that came out, and it used to be on, used to get delivered into the Argos pallets. in pallets. Yeah. It used to come in, Huge and pallets. people used to rip open the plastic, and on you went, yeah. and you, you picked up your Argos catalogue. It was very mm. exciting at the time, <laughs> but um, but now CDs were about the same. So if yeah. I, yeah. I'll have to, I'm going to go back now and check what's on that first yeah. one. I refuse to throw my, my now albums away. My wife keeps telling me, get rid of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spotify now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. You can have an Argos catalogue on the deserted island. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would take one. I used to love it. I used to circle stuff. And <laughs> you did. You used to look at, you used to want to buy stuff that you had no reason to buy, but, but you think about it. Yeah. 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 What else do you do as a kid? Yeah. yeah. One final question, Kelvin. Okay. If Hollywood turned up tomorrow, I want to make a blockbuster movie about your life. Uh, who would you get to play you in that movie? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, having just read his book and really enjoying his work, I would say Matthew McConaughey. Good choice, Matthew. Yeah, well, I would say Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. And obviously, he looks as well. But, <laughs> but, but I'd probably there'd, look, but there'd probably be a few nicknames coming out of me, me saying that, but, or names. Uh, but no, he's, I think he's a wonderful actor. Yeah, and, I uh, agree. And uh, he has a good outlook on life as well. I like his, his and uh, his, his book was interesting. And, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. So yeah, probably Ma Matthew McConaughey. Is, yeah. Seen him in The Wolf of Wall Street, and he yeah, stole the movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. He was. He was. A, he's a. He's a very, very good actor. Very, very good actor. And, yeah. And uh, he. Um, is for some funny stories mm -hmm. and I'm sure he'd jump at the chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm honest <laughs> so yeah so. is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think okay. um, Kelvin on behalf of Ethan and I and Thank the whole of the UK uh, we will look forward to sharing your, your experiences uh, with all our looks across the UK I'd love to wish you the best of luck on Saturday I can't wait to swim in town with Ram but I wish Northampton and yourself uh, all the best for the season and personally, from working with Northampton Town, uh, the education programme, and the way they learn to speak about yourself and the club and the community, uh, it's probably the best club I've ever heard of in Peterborough oh. by the people I know. Appreciate that. So, no, and I'm glad you work. threw in you're a Swindon fan after the interview. So, uh, <laughs> so we actually did. So we did. So we, yeah. 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 Well. so we did the interview. But, <laughs> no, but no. no Listen, you. we really enjoy it. We, no. as a club, we're very proud of what we do in the education That's side of things, and, and we're well. and we're proud of the kids. Yeah. You know, because they yeah. they make it. The staff and the kids they Absolutely. make it. I say thank you for opening the door for people like me. No, yeah. no, we're really pleased. I'm not really pleased. It's a fantastic scheme. Really, every time you come in, it's an absolute joy and a pleasure. Good. And the way they speak about the club, it's a real community. Good. Wherever you go. Good. Yeah, thank, you for that. thank you. Thank you.